All right, let's solve our first physics problem. Our first physics opportunity. Imagine you're out in space, no friction. There's a box. Its mass is 14 kilograms. And you put a force of 40 newtons on it, and you start at rest. V naught equals zero. You start at rest, and you put a force of 40 newtons on it, and guess what it's going to do? It's accelerating. It's going to move 0.7 meters. Is the change in displacement of the box. I want to know everything that happens. I want to analyze this from a perspective of forces, of energy, of momentum, and of kinematics. Okay, so forces. We know F equals MA. So I put a force on this mass. It's going to accelerate. So I can find the acceleration of the box is equal to the force on the box divided by the mass of the box. Nice. How about energy? Ah, there's a force over a distance. I know that that's work, that's change of energy. So the work, which is the force, the work on the box, is the force on the box times the distance the box moves, the displacement of the box. That's work. That's going to turn into energy. Right? In fact, that's going to all be converted, because there's no friction, to kinetic energy of the box, which is one-half mv squared. Now, you might want to ask yourself, was there any initial energy? Ah, the box was originally at rest, so all of that work is all the kinetic energy the box has at the end. So that's, we can write an F here for final velocity of the box. And then we say, ah, change in momentum. What about change in momentum? The initial momentum was zero. It wasn't moving. Afterwards, it's moving. I violated the conservation of momentum law. I'm in trouble. Wait, hold on. I remember there's a system. There was no momentum to begin with, and this box has some final momentum. It has a change of momentum. But where did it get that momentum? I remember, and I can exert a force on this body. But you can see there's also a force acting on me. That's the same force or repulsion. Ah, there's another player here. I have to ask deeper, where did that momentum come from? It came from Pete. And the mass of Pete is equal to 70 kg. So that means that there's this other big mass here. Mass of Pete is equal to 70 kg. And so... The momentum that this block got from Pete must be equal to the momentum in the other direction that Pete got from the block. And so I can say, I can say that Pete's momentum, final momentum of Pete, must be equal to the final momentum of the box, but in the opposite direction. Uh, very good. So then I can find out all the things that are happening with me because of that momentum. And lastly, kinematics. Well, we can find the acceleration from analyzing forces. We can also find time because we know, that we know the force. There's a force acting on this body, and that's equal to the change in momentum over change in time because force is the rate of change in momentum. So I can find time, and then I can find everything I need to know about the velocity versus time of my box or my body. Okay, so now we understand what the forces are doing, what's happening with energy, what's happening with momentum, and we have some idea about the kinematics. Let's solve for the forces. F equals ma, and so the acceleration of the box is equal to the force on the box divided by the mass of the box. That's 40 newtons divided by 14 kilograms. 
this winds up being 2.86, but the important part are the units. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared divided by kilograms. I love it because the kilograms cancel and I have units of acceleration in my answer. Energy. What we see is that the work is turning to kinetic energy. So work is force times distance, which is equal to 40 newtons times 0 0.7 meters. That's 28, and now again, the unit's the most important part, kilogram meters per second squared times meter. Ah, I like it because this is kilogram meters squared per second squared is 28 joules. And let's make it easier on the grader by always circling my answer. But this turns to kinetic energy. So maybe I don't even want to do this. Maybe we want to run right to the work, which is force times distance, goes to one half mv squared. And we want to find out what the final velocity is. So we can, set, we can solve for V, multiply through by 2, and divide by M, and we end up with 2 force times distance divided by M is equal to V squared. Right? Then I just take the square root of both sides, and I've got my velocity. Let's put in numbers. 2 times 40 newtons. times 0.7 meters divided by 14 kg. 14, 14 divided by 7 is 2, so 0.7 will be 20. 20 makes 2 equals 4. Okay, let's check my units. I've got newton meters, that's kilogram meters per second squared times meter divided by kilograms. I love it, they cancel, and I have units of meters squared per second squared. Shit! Right. Okay, I forgot the square root. It's one half. Meters squared per second squared. Square root is meters per second, but that means this is wrong. I needed to take the square root of that number, and that's two meters per second. So now I know the final of this guy moving along is two meters per second, so this can be my before. And after, we've got this guy moving along at 2 meters per second. Excellent. Now how about momentum? We know if this guy gained momentum in that direction, I must have gained momentum in the opposite direction, the same amount. So afterwards, this big guy here is moving in that direction. Because the initial momentum was zero, everything was at rest, the final momentum must be zero to make in, in the whole system. So that means Pete's momentum, the momentum of Pete in this direction, must be equal to the momentum of the box in this direction. Or mass of Pete times the velocity of Pete must be equal to the mass of the box times the velocity of the box. Right, see, these have to be equal and opposite. So they add to zero. But what do we know? The mass of Pete, Pete's mass is 70 as opposed to 14. Mass of Pete is equal to five times the mass of the box. So what does that say about Pete's speed? If he has five times the mass, and the momentum has to be the same, we can see the speed of Pete must be one-fifth the speed of the box. or 2 meters per second divided by 5, which is 0 0.4 meters per second. I see. So you see, I push off on this box. The box takes off at 2 meters per second, about this fast, right? I take off in the other direction at 0.4 meters per second, about this fast. How about kinematics? How long did all this take? Well, the force is equal to the rate of change in momentum. Right? The change in momentum, ah, 
the change of momentum is mass times velocity because it started with zero. So let's take the box. That's 14 kg times 2 meters per second is equal to 28 kilogram meters per second. Excellent. The force acting on the box was 40 newtons. So I can write out the amount of time is equal to that dp divided by f is 28 kilogram meters per second divided by 40 kilogram meters per second squared. Let me check my units. I've got one second in the denominator of the denominator. That comes up in the numerator. And I've got 28 divided by 40. That's 0.7 seconds. So now I can get a very good idea of everything that's going on. I can draw all the kinematics for the box. 0 seconds. 0 0.7 seconds. I can graph the velocity as a function of time. I start at 0 meters per second and finish at 2 meters per second. Now, is this a straight line? What would a straight line mean? Ah, the slope of the VT graph is change in velocity over change in time is the acceleration. So the slope of this line is the acceleration, which we know already. The acceleration is constant, is 2.86 meters per second squared. So this should be a straight line. We also know that the average velocity halfway between this is 1 meter per second. That's great. That would explain why in 0 0.07 seconds we move exactly 0 0.07 meters because average velocity is total distance divided by total time is 0 0.7 meters. You've moved in 0 0.7 seconds. One meter per second. I love it. And lastly, we can look at what is the distance on this graph, right? Because your speed times a little bit of time you're going that speed is speed times time is delta x, your distance. And so I can look at this graph and say, oh, yeah, the area under this graph is the integral of velocity is how far I go, is the displacement. And this is a triangle, and so the area, or the integral of the velocity, is the displacement, is a triangle one-half base times height. And so you have one-half, 0 0.07 times two meters per second, one-half times 0 0.7 seconds times 2 meters per second, I wind up with 0 0.7 meters. So the most important part of your solving a problem is going to be the first thing I did when I said what's happening with the forces, what's happening with the energy, what's happening with the momentum, what's happening with the kinematics. Then there will be some formulas that follow and then some unit analysis. But the first thing you're going to do for every problem you solve is tell me what's going on with the forces, energy, momentum, and kinematics. Thanks.